How to Build Confidence and Destroy Self-Doubt Written by Bo Norton Self-confidence is a quality one must possess if he or she wishes to be happy and fulfilled. Self-doubt is the killer of all dreams. It can creep in without being noticed, and from there wrecks havoc on almost every area of our lives. In this guide, I will show you the strategies I use to defeat my demons of self-doubt and go from a shy, insecure kid to someone who lives confidently and believes in no limits. Chapter 1. The Power of Positivity You cannot tailor-make the situations in life, but you can tailor-make the attitudes to fit those situations. Zig Ziglar Making any kind of positive change in life requires a positive mindset. Negative thinking patterns will prevent you from doing many of the things that you need to do in order to build the extreme confidence that is required to live the life of your dreams. In fact, negative thinking is the absolute opposite of confidence. To build the inner confidence that you desire, you must learn to be optimistic, hopeful, and full of positive energy. In this chapter, I will show you how to cultivate the mindset of a confident, happy, and successful person. Awareness and Thought Restructuring The first step to creating a more positive mindset is to become aware of the nature of your thoughts. The majority of people go through their lives without ever taking the time to notice and analyze their own thoughts. It is a very common thing for people to go through life on autopilot and make very few conscious decisions. However, this is not their fault. The mind has great power and momentum. If you do not learn to control your own thinking processes, you will have very little control over your life and the decisions that you make. Your brain will tend to take over and make all the decisions for you, but this is not always a good thing. Exercising more control over your life starts with awareness. I will now teach you a method that you can use to become more aware of your thoughts. Do this every day and you will gradually become more capable of consciously creating the life that you desire. When you get a minute, find a quiet spot where you can relax and be alone. Sit in a comfortable position, close your eyes, and just breathe. As you sit there and breathe, notice the thoughts that come into your mind. Pay extra attention to the types of thoughts you are having. Are you thinking of the past or the future? Do any of your thoughts make you feel anxious, depressed, angry, or any other kind of negative emotion? If you have a negative thought of any kind pop into your head, write it down. If you do this every day, over time you will see yourself becoming more and more conscious of your thoughts throughout the day. As you become more aware of your thoughts, you will be able to replace the negative ones with positive ones that help you become more confident and capable of improving yourself in all areas of your life. Sit in silence for at least 10 minutes every day while focusing on your breath and noticing the thoughts that come into your mind. This is essential if you want to effectively create a positive attitude and gain control over your thoughts and emotions. Now let me briefly discuss how to replace a negative thought with a positive one. As you get better and better at noticing and analyzing your own thoughts, you may get sudden insights at random times throughout the day. You may suddenly see very clearly the thoughts that you have in certain situations. You will likely catch yourself in the middle of thoughts that are in some way negative, and you will see how they are affecting your attitude and emotions. This is a very good sign. It means that you are creating more awareness in your life. The moment you notice a negative thought come into your mind, immediately replace it with a positive one. For example, you think to yourself, I can't do this, I'm just not good enough. When you recognize that thought, immediately think to yourself, delete, and then repeat back to yourself something like this three times. Actually, I can do this. I just need to put in a little more effort. At first, your mind will not want to accept this new statement because it is accustomed to more negative thought inputs. This is perfectly fine because this thought restructuring exercise is meant to reprogram your mind over time. If you repeat a positive thought three times to yourself after every one negative thought, you tell your subconscious mind that the positive thought should be accepted instead of the negative thought. Slowly, your mind will adjust and begin to generate more positive thoughts. These thoughts will give you a more optimistic outlook on life, which is a necessary ingredient for positive change. 
the more you do this thought exercise the more momentum you will gain in the direction of an extremely positive mindset which is essential for building and maintaining true confidence optimism is the most important human trait because it allows us to evolve our ideas to improve our situation and to hope for a better tomorrow seth godin outside influence Restructuring your thoughts is an essential step in building a robust inner environment, but the outside world has the ability to come in and wipe out that inner strength if you aren't careful. Many of the thoughts that we have on a daily basis, whether positive or negative, are largely a result of the type of environment we are in most often. Take for example a kid that was raised by an abusive parent who always told him how worthless he was, or a kid who was bullied his whole life. These are two examples of people raised in a negative environment with very little or no positive outside influence. Do you think these two people would have a positive outlook on life? It's possible, but unlikely. Environment is everything. To build extreme inner confidence, you must make an effort to surround yourself with positive people that think highly of you and encourage you often. This is not always easy in the world we live in but it is crucial that you consciously decide to seek out a more positive environment for yourself. Creating a positive environment sometimes means eliminating people from your life. From personal experience, I can say that this is the most difficult part of the journey. It may not always be possible to eliminate the negative people from your life completely, such as in the case of those people being family members or people you live with, but it is important that you reduce the amount of time you spend with people that radiate negative energy. If you have a certain friend or family member that seems to always doubt or criticize you in some way, tell them politely that you are trying to make positive changes in your life and would appreciate it if they would encourage you or say nothing at all. It is likely that they will get the hint and start to change their attitude towards you, but it is also possible that they will begin to resent you for speaking out against them. The way people react will vary greatly, but if they react with more negativity, Consider drastically reducing the amount of time you spend with them. You may even consider cutting them out of your life completely. This can be a difficult process, but remember, optimism and positive energy in massive quantities is required for you to achieve the extreme confidence, success, and peace of mind that you desire. Anyone who drains you of that positive energy is directly interfering with the process of you becoming that person. It has been said many times by many successful people that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I have found this to be absolutely true. I cannot stress enough the importance of choosing who you spend your time with wisely. The people you interact with are constantly giving off a certain type of energy that directly affects your own energy. Thoughts and emotions are things. When someone has negative thoughts or emotions, they radiate from them as a form of physical energy that directly affects those around them. Choose your friends wisely so that you are always surrounded with positive energy. Choose friends that possess the qualities you wish to have. You will be inspired and motivated by them to become a stronger version of yourself. Practice cultivating inner confidence by restructuring your thoughts but also have the awareness to shape your outer environment in a way that supports you. Master your inner and outer environments, and you will guarantee your own success. I would like to conclude this chapter with a quote by Gordon B. Hinckley that I found very fitting. What I am suggesting is that each of us turn from the negativism that permeates our society and look for the remarkable good among those with whom we associate that we speak of one another's virtues more than we speak of one another's faults, that optimism replace pessimism, that our faith exceed our fears. When I was a young man and was prone to speak critically, my father would say, cynics do not contribute, skeptics do not create, doubters do not achieve. Here are two books that I highly recommend on the concept of positive thinking. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and the Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. Chapter 2 Fake It Till You Make It Our bodies are apt to be our autobiographies. Frank Gillette Burgess
I'm sure you've heard the phrase, but can you really make something real by faking it? This is something I have been experimenting with for quite some time now, and I've concluded that this is a very powerful concept that has the ability to transform many lives if used properly. However, I've also realized that it is not enough to simply fake it. In order to make lasting changes to your emotional state, feelings of confidence, happiness, etc., you must learn to identify with what you are faking. In other words, you must believe in the emotion or quality you wish to possess and completely forget that you are faking it. More on this later, but for now I would like to discuss the basics of faking it till you make it. My idea of faking it has a lot to do with body language and the way one carries themselves. Picture in your mind two people, one who is extremely confident and successful and one who is shy, awkward, and insecure. Now compare the body language of these two people. Which one stands up straight? Which one slouches? Which one walks with a pep in their step? And which one drags their feet? I'm sure you get the idea, but how can you use this knowledge to your advantage? The answer is simple. Emulate the person who possesses the qualities that you wish to possess. In this case, I am speaking specifically of body language. If you want to feel confident, you must learn to act confident. Use the following tips to improve your body language so that you can feel more confident. Take long strides when you walk. Walk slightly faster than normal and act like you know where you're going. Look straight forward or slightly above eye level. When sitting down, sit up straight with a slight arch in your lower back. Keep your shoulders back and relaxed. When standing, keep your arms relaxed and down at your sides. Don't put your hands in your pockets or fidget with anything. When having a conversation, look the person directly in the eyes and maintain eye contact. If you are a man and you meet eyes with a beautiful woman, do not look away until she does. Speak loudly and clearly in conversations with others. Don't mumble. I highly recommend that you do some type of exercise that strengthens your lower back. The best exercise for this is deadlifts. By strengthening your lower back, you make it far easier to sit up straight and maintain good posture. Exercise in general is great for improving your posture as well as your self-image. Practice positive body language while going throughout your day. Take notice of how you walk, talk, sit, stand, and interact with others. When you become aware of poor body language, immediately adjust it to that of a more confident person. Do this consistently and your new way of behaving will become more and more natural. You may even get some compliments on the way you carry yourself. You will be a changed person and people will take notice. You will have effectively used your body to change your mind. How is this possible? The insecure person has poor posture and weak body language because their thoughts are negative and self-defeating. The confident person's thoughts are positive and self-empowering. In most cases, it is the thought process of the person that affects the way they carry themselves. However, the reverse can be true as well. The mind-body connection is what allows you to directly affect your thoughts using your body language, and that is why faking it until you make it actually works. Carrying yourself in a confident way, even if you aren't confident at all, will make you feel at least slightly more confident. However, to have extreme confidence, you must be able to use the power of the body and the mind. The power of thought restructuring combined with the power of positive body language will shoot your confidence through the roof. You can have an extremely positive mindset, but if you naturally have bad posture or poor body language, then you will not experience the highest levels of inner confidence that are possible for you. Similarly, poor thinking habits cannot be completely overridden by positive body language. Use the thought restructuring methods mentioned in the first chapter along with the tips in this chapter to cultivate confidence quickly. Confidence and being happy go hand in hand. It is difficult to have one without the other, so taking steps to become a happier person will make becoming confident that much easier. The fake it till you make it approach can be applied to happiness also. All you have to do is fake a smile and you will instantly feel a little happier. Smile at everyone you meet, even if you are having a bad day. You will give your subconscious mind the message to feel happy, and so you don't really need any reason at all to feel that way. 
Happiness is indeed a choice. You can be whoever you want to be. Remember, you always have the choice to consciously emulate the characteristics of the people you wish to be like. This essentially means that you have the ability to become whoever you want if you have the right knowledge and skills to do so. If you use the strategies and techniques in this book and practice them regularly, you will gain the ability to shape your life and personality into whatever you choose. Remember though, this is not about trying to be someone else or create a false identity. It is about consciously choosing your own destiny and becoming the strongest version of yourself. On a final note, I would like to briefly discuss the power of belief. The above methods will help you to feel much more confident and capable, but for lasting change to occur, you must believe with conviction that you are a confident person. It is time to let go of the limiting beliefs that have been holding you back. One of the most profound truths is that we are what we believe ourselves to be. Forget what you've been told by your parents or friends. You have the ability to shape your own reality through the power of belief. Believe you are capable of extraordinary things and you will surely go on to achieve all that you desire to achieve. It's not enough to say it. You have to believe with all your heart that you are an amazing person who is capable of absolutely anything. You no longer have room for negativity in your life. Others will no longer bring you down. Greatness lies within you. Believe in yourself. Choose who you want to become and then go be that person. Chapter 3 Goal Setting and Visualization Our plans miscarry because they have no aim. When a man does not know what harbor he is making for, no wind is the right wind. Seneca Making steady progress in life is a fail-proof way to steadily increase your confidence. And the best way to ensure that you make progress is to set measurable goals for yourself and visualize the outcomes you would like to see. Without specific goals, you have nothing to aim for. With nothing to aim for, you have no way to measure your progress. In this chapter, I will share with you the goal setting and visualization strategies that countless successful people have used to achieve great things and drastically increase their self-confidence. There was a time in my life when I felt very lost and unsure of myself, and I am willing to bet you know exactly how this feels. Most of us go through it at some point in our lives, but some people spend their whole lives feeling lost. I believe the main reason for this is because very few people have a grand vision for their life or a clearly defined purpose. I think that having extreme confidence requires one to have specific goals that they work towards every single day. Without something to work for, self-confidence dwindles and one's life can begin to feel dull and pointless. The truth is, confident people feel as if their life has meaning. Creating a grand vision for yourself and setting big goals will give your life plenty of meaning, and if you work towards those goals with your purpose in mind, your confidence will grow steadily along with your success. Now, let's explore some of the ways for you to discover your purpose in life and begin on the path to great achievement. Program your subconscious mind. Writing down your goals is the fastest way to achieve them because it programs your subconscious mind to begin looking for ways to reach your desired destination. The more often you reprogram your goals into your subconscious mind by either writing them down or visualizing them, the stronger your desire and willpower will become. These are two essential ingredients for success. Having big goals that are compelling will make you more likely to want to achieve them. Desire and willpower simply cannot be created if you have goals that don't excite you. If you don't have any major goals for yourself, well now is your time to make some. Whether or not you believe you can achieve your goals is not important right now. The important thing is that you set your goals high and you write them down without questioning them. If you could do or be anything in the world, what would it be? No matter how far-fetched it might sound, just simply write it down. Now I want you to go into great detail and write down exactly what your life would be like if you had already achieved your goal. This is where the visualization comes into play. Close your eyes and imagine yourself living your dreams. What would your life look like? Who would you see? What would you do? What would you smell, taste, feel, and so on? 
Use the power of your imagination and go to the place in the future where your life is absolutely incredible. Now begin writing down every detail of this scene in your mind. Continue writing for 20 minutes or until you feel as if what you've written perfectly describes every detail of your ideal life. We'll call this your dream sheet. This is a powerful exercise that will change your life in ways you couldn't imagine. Never underestimate the power of the subconscious mind. Now that you have a detailed description of your ideal life, you can begin to program this image into your subconscious mind so that you will naturally be led in the direction of your dreams. The subconscious mind does not know the difference between what is real and what is imagined. So by visualizing on a consistent basis how you wish your life to be, you make it almost inevitable that you will turn that dream into reality. This is a powerful concept that should not be taken lightly. I have personally studied many successful people and have found that many of them attribute their success to the power of goal setting and visualization. These extremely successful people didn't always have high self-esteem and confidence. They had to build it over time and first visualize themselves as confident and capable people. Your confidence will increase as your goal becomes more clear and attainable. The way to make this happen is by consistently imagining yourself as a confident and successful person. Remember, the subconscious mind doesn't know what is real. Use the power of your imagination to create your reality. Take the dream sheet that you created and read it to yourself at least twice per day. An even better idea is to record yourself reading your dream sheet and listen to it on your MP3 player. As you are reading or listening to it, try to picture every detail in your mind. See where you will live and the people you will be with. Hear the conversations that you will have and the sounds in your environment. Taste the food you will eat. Smell the fresh air. Feel what it feels like to be the confident, successful person you are destined to become. Read this sheet every day and practice visualizing it. Visualize it every spare second you get. Your dream may seem unattainable when you begin doing this, but the more you read your dream sheet and visualize your idea of a perfect life, the more you will believe in your ability to actually live those dreams. Of course, action will be required at some point if you wish to achieve your goals and drastically increase your confidence, but writing those goals down and seeing what your life will be like once you accomplish them is the first step and will make taking action so much easier. To make the process of planning your life and setting your goals easier for you, I have created a printable PDF document that you can organize your short and long-term goals with. To access this free guide, simply go to www.healthandhappinessfoundation.com and go to the Free Products tab. This is the end of Part 1. Continue to Part 2 to listen to the second half of this audiobook. Baby Steps to Success So now you have some big dreams to inspire and motivate you, but how do you begin to make those dreams a reality when you lack the confidence to take the massive action that is required? Firstly, don't get overwhelmed by the large vision you have created for yourself. Simply visualize it on a daily basis to program it into your mind. Everything will come more naturally if you do this. At some point, you will need to take action if you plan on becoming an extremely confident person. Confidence is easily increased when you have a series of many small successes. With each success, you will become more confident in your ability to push your limits and do greater things. But you must first start out at a level that is within your comfort zone. Set yourself small daily and weekly goals that are steps towards your grand vision. Make sure that these small goals are attainable. They can be as simple as reading for 30 minutes or taking a walk, but it is important that you follow through with them and do them every day. If you set goals and fail to achieve them, it can actually lower your confidence. So that is why you need to start out with something that you know you can do. Write these small goals down somewhere and check them off your list every time you complete one. Every time you cross one of the goals off your list, you will experience a small boost in your confidence. A series of small things done over time lead to big results. As you see your life improving steadily, you will be more motivated to try things that are a little more difficult. Your confidence will grow with every small success, and you will come closer and closer to your grand vision. 
Confidence is a result of progress, and that is why goal setting is so important. Goals will give you something to work towards and will give your life more meaning. You will begin to see that you are actually capable of more than you previously thought, and you will likely begin to wonder how far you can go. Keep the vision of your dreams in mind. Set small goals that lead you there, and success and confidence will come naturally. Chapter 4. Study Success Learning is acquired by reading books, but the much more necessary learning, the knowledge of the world, is only to be acquired by reading men and studying all the various facets of them. Lord Chesterfield If I had to attribute my growth as a human being to one thing, it would be my relentless study of successful people. I like to say often, if you want to be the best, learn from the best. There is a vast amount to be learned from the people that have already done what we desire to do. Successful people in all walks of life have documented their knowledge and wisdom, and much of that information is readily available to us in the blink of an eye. The internet is an incredible blessing, especially for those who want to improve their lives. Let me take you through a few of the ways that you can begin using the internet and books to skyrocket your confidence and begin believing in your ability to achieve great things. Autobiographies and Self-Help Reading is great for so many reasons, but the main reason I recommend it is because it gives you the opportunity to learn from the greats that have come before you. Reading an autobiography of someone you admire can give you great insights into your own life and give you a different perspective on things. It can also help to reassure you that you're not alone in your struggles. Most successful people had to undergo lots of pain and suffering before they reached their greatest successes. Reading about people who came from humble beginnings and went on to achieve great things can give you a major confidence boost because you will realize that greatness is not just for the privileged or lucky. Greatness is for those who never give up and continue on in the face of resistance. If you are reading this right now, then you are on the right track. It shows that you haven't given up and you are making an effort to improve your life. Keep learning. Self-help books are another great learning tool. Many of the techniques that I use daily to enhance my life have been taught to me in self-help books. Reading them can give you valuable information that can't be found anywhere else. When put into action, the strategies mentioned in some self-help books have the potential to greatly increase the quality of your life. Remember, confidence is built through progress, so any book you read that gives you tools to help you make progress in your life is a book worth reading. Here are a few of the best self-help books that I've read. Unlimited Power by Anthony Robbins The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle Mastery by Robert Greene Spontaneous Happiness by Andrew Wheel These four books alone will provide you with a wealth of knowledge that you can use to better almost every aspect of your life. You don't need to buy tens or hundreds of books. A few quality ones will do. YouTube Learning I would estimate that 75% of everything I've learned about what it takes to become a confident and capable human being has been from YouTube videos. While most people were watching music videos, stand-up comedy, and all that, I was watching inspiring and motivational people show me how to be successful. It became kind of an addiction for me, but I'm glad to say it was an addiction that made me a better person. If you're like most people, you would probably rather watch a video than read a book, so why not make YouTube your primary learning tool? It has transformed my life, and I'm confident it can do the same for you. Here are a few of the channels that I follow that may be able to inspire you as well. TEDx Talks, Rob Ross, Elliot Hulse, Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, E.T. The Hip Hop Preacher. These YouTube channels have been responsible for a huge increase in my confidence. They have inspired me and led me to believe in myself and in all the possibilities that life offers us. Sometimes it's hard to inspire and motivate ourselves, so it's never a bad idea to turn to others to do the job for us. There are countless people out there trying to lift people up and empower them. Don't be afraid to turn to these people for guidance. They may just change your life forever. Emulate a Great 
One of the fastest ways to become a confident person is to spend time with or study the life of someone who is already confident. Just as I mentioned earlier about emulating the body language of the people you want to be like, you can also emulate a person's thought processes and behaviors to become more like them. My suggestion to you is for you to find one person that you admire above all others and find out as much about that person as you possibly can. This can be a family member, professional athlete, celebrity, or whoever that has the character traits and lifestyle that you would like to have. Find out everything you can about this person. Read books about them, watch videos and interviews of them, and talk to them in person if possible. This person already has the qualities that you would like to possess, so by studying them you can view the actions that they took and the type of mindset that got them to where they're at. Now all you have to do is cultivate a similar way of thinking and behaving, which can be done in part by using the thought restructuring exercises that I mentioned in the first chapter. The more you study the people you want to be like, the more your thoughts and actions will become aligned with the type of life that they are living. And so it goes back to the fake it till you make it theory. Act as if you were already there, and soon you will be. Addict yourself to success. Dedicate yourself to the study of what it takes to become a better human being. If you want to achieve your goals bad enough, you will make sacrifices to do so. Perhaps you need to spend less time watching television or playing video games, and more time developing yourself. I promise you it is more fun than it sounds. The time you spend on improving yourself will pay off a million fold in the long run. You must get over the mindset of instant gratification and quick fixes. You will struggle and you will fail. But the satisfaction you get from watching yourself steadily improve over time cannot be explained in words. Make the choice today whether you are going to stay the same as you are or grow and evolve into a powerful, confident, happy, and successful person. Chapter 5 Facing Fears Inaction breeds doubt and fear. Action breeds confidence and courage. If you want to conquer fear, do not sit home and think about it. Go out and get busy. Dale Carnegie the greatest challenge will come on your journey to greater success and confidence when you are face to face with your biggest fear. When this time comes you will have the option to stay where you are comfortable or to push forward through the resistance. If you fail to take action you will never have the extreme confidence you desire. In fact failure to take action when you know you need to will lower your confidence. So please take what you learn from this chapter and begin to use it immediately. Facing your fears takes great courage. If you suffer from lack of confidence, this task can seem nearly impossible. In this chapter, I will give you a step-by-step -step formula for building your courage so that you can face your fears more willingly and experience the increase in confidence that comes from doing so. Small steps lead to big change. If you jump right in and face your biggest fears before you take the time to develop your self-confidence, you risk falling flat on your face and destroying your self-esteem even further. By no means is failure a bad thing, but if you aren't prepared for it, it can do more harm than good. That is why it is important to start small and face your fears gradually. As you adapt to getting out of your comfort zone, tasks that previously would have been extremely intimidating become less of a challenge. Make a list of things that scare you and rank them on a scale from 1 to 10 according to how difficult they would be for you to do. For example, walking up to a stranger and starting a conversation might be a 3 out of a 10, and giving a speech in front of a thousand people might be a 9 out of 10. Keep adding to this list until you have at least two or three things for each level of difficulty. Once you complete the list, it is time to begin taking action. Start with the tasks that are a 1 out of 10 difficulty, and continue to do them until they become relatively easy for you to do. Go at your own pace, but continue to take action on a consistent basis, even if you have to stay on the lower difficulties for a long time. Move your way up the scale, and your comfort zone will slowly expand. It may take a year or two for you to get to the 9s and 10s on your list. But the important thing is that you are growing and evolving into a better person during the process.
You will soon find that you are capable of doing things that you never would have thought possible before, and your confidence will increase as you get more and more experience with facing your fears. It's important to know that facing your fears will never be a comfortable experience. You will always experience some form of anxiety when facing an unfamiliar situation, but building your courage will allow you to jump into these situations without thinking too much about it. Once you actually do the thing, the fear usually dissipates and the whole experience becomes quite rewarding. Do not expect to eliminate fear, because it will always be there. Do expect, however, to build your courage to a point where fear is no longer an obstacle. Accountability Partners It can be very difficult to face your fears if you don't have a compelling reason to do so. A study was once done that discovered people are twice as likely to avoid pain as they are to seek pleasure. So personal growth and increased confidence may not be a compelling enough reason for you to willingly face your fears. Perhaps you should consider focusing on what you don't want instead. A great way to ensure that you take action is to create a situation where the consequences of not doing what you need to do are greater than the fear of doing it. You will need an accountability partner for this, which is simply someone that can hold you to your word. So, for example, you tell your friend that you will approach a beautiful woman and ask her for her phone number, or else you have to give him or her $50. Give them the money to hold on to first, and tell them not to give it back unless you do what you said you would. Most people aren't willing to give up 50 bucks, so the fear of losing the money will be greater than the fear of approaching the woman. You can do this with just about anything you choose. If there is something you know you need to do, find an accountability partner that you can trust and tell them your plan. Using money for this works very well because people do not like to lose money and oftentimes would rather completely embarrass themselves than give it up. Remember, fear is the greatest motivator. Use it to your advantage. Fear is a blessing. Everyone experiences fear. It is a natural response to unfamiliar situations. With society evolving at such a rapid pace, unfamiliarity is very common. However, I believe that unfamiliarity and unpredictability is what makes life exciting. Excitement and fear are almost identical emotions, the only difference being the way that we label those emotions. Next time you feel afraid, rethink the situation and consider that maybe you're just excited. At the very least, know that everyone has fears and insecurities, and that being afraid does not make you weak or any less capable of achieving greatness. In fact, fear is a blessing. When you overcome fears, you are generously rewarded with increased confidence and self-esteem. Without fear, you would never know how great it feels to overcome challenges and evolve into a stronger version of yourself. I promise you, the struggle is worth it. Just carry on and stay strong, my friend. Conclusion Create a Cycle of Positivity There was a time in my life when I felt as if everything around me was falling apart. My self-esteem was at an all-time low. I was absolutely miserable and I didn't know why. But soon I realized that I had simply gotten myself into a vicious downward spiral. I knew that if I didn't reverse the cycle, I would suffer for most of my life. So I made the decision that I was going to do whatever it took to become happy and live the life of my dreams. I've been in an upward spiral ever since, and I'm only gaining more and more momentum as time goes by. I say this because my mission in life is to inspire others and let them know that no matter where they stand currently, major positive change is possible with the right knowledge. This book discusses many of the tools I use to drastically improve my life and now I share them with you so that you may do the same. You deserve to live the life of your dreams. However, it is up to you to go make it happen. It all starts with your mindset. In order to achieve your goals, you have to believe that it is possible. If you are just starting the journey of personal development, focus first on creating a positive attitude. This can be done by using the strategies in Chapter 1. Learn to love yourself fully. Don't place so much importance on the opinions of other people. You cannot build self-confidence when you are being bombarded with the negativity of the world. Separate yourself from that at all costs, even if it means moving to another state or ending a long-standing relationship. Surround yourself with positive people, 
emulate the greats and face your fears head on with every ounce of positivity you feed your mind body and spirit you gain momentum in the direction of your dreams reaching your goals becomes increasingly easier and your small successes build on one another to create something magnificent extreme confidence is just a byproduct of success with every small success you will experience an increase in confidence set a compelling goal that gets you moving and then focus on the journey whatever you do just keep moving forward thank you for taking the time to listen to this audiobook i hope that you apply these methods and experience greater success as a result for more motivation for your personal transformation visit www.healthandhappinessfoundation.com